Hello everybody, welcome back to the shop. So for the past week I've been playing around with this right here. This is a Weebooks LuckyBot chocolate extruder for a 3D printer. This one attached to my Ender 3 Pro and as you can see it does actually print chocolate. So in today's video what I'd like to do is a little unboxing and setup and then a small review of the product and then at the end of the video I would like to give you um, a set of pointers or helpful tips that will help you print chocolate successfully if you happen to purchase one of these LuckyBot devices. So if that interests you, stick around. So I opened the box when I first received it because the FedEx guy, or well, not the guy who delivered it probably, but the it had pretty a pretty rough uh, trip from wherever it came from. So I did open it just to make sure everything was intact. But um, this is pretty much how it comes when it's delivered. So um, I see a couple of packages of what they call chocolate tubes. This looks like a Z-plate adapter, an AC adapter, and this is the Lucky Bot itself. And like I said, this is a add-on for your 3D printer. So basically, it is just the chocolate extruder by itself and then it requires you to modify um, your 3D printer in order to accommodate this device. I don't really know everything that's required for me to do that yet but I'm gonna go ahead and take just a couple minutes find the instructions read through them see if I understand what I need to do and then I'll come back and actually start uh, making the modifications to my Ender 3 Pro because that's what this is compatible with. With the hardware unpacked I realized that the instructions found in the box are only there to guide you to the website for assembly videos. When you visit the website, be sure to have the serial number of the unit handy because you will need it to access most of the content found within. Unfortunately, I don't see a spot where you can register a username or your serial number to the website, so every time you visit luckybot.us, you need to have that serial number handy to access the content. The assembly videos quickly run through the assembly of the device. They seem to be a little short on detail, but hey, you likely assembled that Ender 3 with their terrible instructions, so this should be pretty easy compared to that. I started by taking apart the hot end of my Ender 3 Pro. The standard setup has you remove everything from the Z-plate and attach the Z-plate adapter found in the LuckyBot kit. I will be using the Z-plate extension, so that requires me to remove the whole Z-axis carriage and replace it with the one provided in the extension kit. Once the carriage is installed, I can then install the chocolate extruder. The device is fairly heavy when compared to a normal extruder, but the single Z-axis motor of the Ender 3 seems to handle the weight just fine. Time to wire this guy up. This will require you to take the bottom cover off of your machine and remove the plug that goes to your old extruder. In most cases, this plug is glued in, so you might have to cut away some hot glue before you can remove the plug. Using the provided cable, you can now plug the chocolate extruder into the motherboard. One last step is to roughly set the Z-height of the extruder assembly. This requires the Z-limit switch to be moved up the rail to meet the X-axis beam. Using a folded piece of paper, I was able to use the provided extension cable to relocate the Z-limit switch to the correct position.
The power brick has a built-in Y adapter, so you can use the original Ender 3 power cord to power both the 3D printer and the chocolate extruder. Now it's time to prepare the chocolate. For this experiment, I tried several types of chocolate. A Hershey's bar, Hershey's and Nestle chocolate chips, and these white and milk chocolate melting nibs. I will tell you right up front, do not use the melting chocolate. It is made with palm oil, which has a much higher melting point than regular chocolate, and it will not work with this extruder. First, I tried heating up some water and setting the chocolate-filled cartridges into the hot bath, but there was too much air still in the tube. The air was insulating the chocolate, slowing the melting process, as well as making the whole thing want to float and tip over. Instead, I used the microwave in 30-second intervals to get the chocolate just to its melting point. Then after packing in more unmelted chocolate in and fitting the silicone plug, I soaked the cartridges for a good 15 minutes in the hot water bath to make sure the chocolate was evenly melted. After the chocolate cartridges were prepared, I stored them in the refrigerator overnight to re-solidify them. The next day, I took one of my chocolate cartridges and loaded it into the machine. I also remembered to install one of the two provided melting nozzles in the bottom of the extruder. In order to print with this chocolate extruder, you need to run two files. First is a G-code file provided by Webooks that prepares your 3D printer to run the chocolate extruder without any errors. Remember, normally a printer is looking for a specific temperature from the hot end before it will allow the extruder to work. It appears that this special G-code file allows you to bypass that feature in order to use the LuckyBot extruder. The second file you run is the actual G-code file for printing. These files can be obtained on the LuckyBot.us website pre-sliced, or you can slice your own using a modified version of Cura also found on the website. Speaking of the website, besides providing G-code and STL files, they also have a 3D text generator and a lithopane generator that can be used to create models that can be printed with this extruder. The version of Cura they provide is a very old, very rudimentary version that has just enough functionality to perform most tasks you need for chocolate 3D printing. If you are familiar with the later versions of Cura, you should be able to get the hang of this older version fairly quickly. Now that I have executed both the config G-code and the model G-code files, I can finally see how this chocolate printer is going to perform. I'll be completely honest with you and tell you that I was not expecting it to print this well on the first try. I was expecting some kind of learning curve or special technique considering I was printing with chocolate. But as you can see, the first print of a honeycomb candy tray printed flawlessly. After that first print, I thought it would be awesome to 3D print a Benchy out of chocolate. But for some reason the extruder wasn't printing like before. It was almost as if it was struggling to push out the chocolate. After much trial and error, emails to the company, and troubleshooting on my end, I finally figured out that in order for the extruder to work properly, you have to run the special G-code file provided by Webooks before every single print. I viewed it more as a firmware file where you just run it once and the machine is configured for the chocolate to extrude. But that is not the case. If you do not run the special G-code file before each print, the printer will go through the motions, but it will not extrude. Armed with this fresh knowledge, I printed a couple more items, like this text plaque and another honeycomb tray. Then, again, I tried to print a chocolate benchy. Admittedly, this extruder is designed to print mostly flat objects, or at most, what I would call 2.5D things, like extruded text and pictures and the like. 
A benchy is fairly complex with lots of infill, overhangs and bridging, which just does not appear to be compatible with a printing media such as chocolate. But I didn't come to this conclusion lightly. As you can see, I have a fleet of failures to prove it. What I like about the LuckyBot Chocolate Extruder. Straightforward install. If you've assembled your 3D printer, installing this extruder should be a familiar exercise. It may not be for absolute beginners, but with the provided video instructions, just about anyone should be able to figure it out. Intuitive controls. There are two heat settings, one for the chocolate cartridge and one for the extruder tip. The circle button is used to turn the extruder on and off. It is also used to cycle between the two heat settings. The up and down arrows are used to adjust the heat setting and to manually move the extruder plunger up and down. Consistent results with quality chocolate. I used both Hershey's and Nestle chocolate with similar results. The Hershey's chocolate bars seem to work better than the chocolate chips, and the Nestle chocolate experiences quite a bit of chocolate bloom after printing. That is a cosmetic condition where the sugars come to the surface of the chocolate and leave a whitish looking residue. It doesn't affect the quality or the flavor of the chocolate, it just looks bad. No waste. If you have a failure, you can just remelt the chocolate and reuse it, or you can just do what I do and eat your failures. Try doing that with PLA. Some observations I have made while using this unit. The nozzles will clog over time. Swapping and cleaning the nozzles frequently is important for having successful prints. Sometimes you may need to swap in the middle of a print. The pause function works well to help you do this. The extruder is most effective with full cartridges. In my limited experience with this extruder, I have found that the first half of the chocolate cartridge tends to print without issue. But when you get to about the halfway point, something happens. Whether the stepper motor is too weak or the chocolate cools a little too much in the chamber, I'm not sure. But printing becomes difficult and inconsistent once you reach the halfway mark. Not for complex shapes. My attempts to print a benchy in chocolate has shown me that there are limitations inherent to using chocolate as a printing medium. It doesn't handle overhangs very well and large amount of infill tends to collapse in and on itself. This system is best used for printing flat objects that don't have a lot of Z height to them. The taller the object being printed, the higher the risk of failure. It is messy. Printing with chocolate can get messy. It kind of drips all over the place and it would be a good idea to cover certain parts of your printer to make cleaning up a little bit easier. Now for some pointers that should help you have the most success printing your chocolate. When loading the cartridges, be sure to fully melt your chocolate. Fully melting the chocolate will help it have a smooth consistency when used in the extruder and it will help eliminate air pockets in the cartridge, which would lead to under extrusion during printing. The chocolate you use does matter. In my opinion, only real chocolate should be used. I had the most consistent performance from Hershey's chocolate bars. They performed better than the Hershey's chocolate chips and the Nestle chocolate. Always run the LuckyBot G-code prior to starting each print. Failure to run the special G-code file will result in a failed print due to under extrusion. The LuckyBot website does not stress this enough and I had to figure it out on my own. Keep your chocolate prints simple. Complex and large designs are not going to work with chocolate as your printing medium. By all means, be ambitious, but also be prepared for failure if your designs are too complex. The cartridge syringes are reusable. I have had success cleaning out the cartridges and reusing them. I used really hot water and a bottle brush to get mine clean. Overall, I am very pleased with how well this chocolate extruder performed. If you have a special event such as a wedding or baby shower coming up, if you are a small time baker, or if you are just really, really into chocolate, this device might be a right fit for you. Remember, this will occupy your 3D printer, and it takes some time to switch over from chocolate back to PLA. But if you are looking to print some chocolate, this is the most affordable option I have seen out there. The LuckyBot team has made an interesting product that works good and with some patience and a little tweaking and trial and error, 
you can print cool little treats using regular off-the-shelf chocolate. I hope you enjoyed my review of the LuckyBot chocolate extruder attachment for 3D printers. I honestly feel that with a little bit of patience, a little bit of practice, you'll be able to 3D print some chocolate into some very interesting and creative designs. Definitely useful if you have an upcoming wedding or maybe a small batch bake shop or just something to have a little bit of fun with when you uh, share treats with family and friends. If you are interested in buying your own LuckyBot a chocolate 3D printing extruder, check down in the description below where you will find an Amazon affiliate link as well as a 10% off coupon code. Big thanks to Weebooks for providing this unit for me to test and to share with you guys. And big thanks to you for tuning in and watching this review. Once again, my name is Tom. This is Southpaw Workshop. I will see you guys next time.